If you had to pick one work that really sums up what retromodernism is all about, it has to be Les Demoiselles d'Avignon by Pablo Picasso. There are very few works throughout the history of art which caused quite such a scandal when they came out, or indeed exerted such influence on artists who followed. This is one extraordinary work. Picasso painted it in 1907, and it was so hated by the patrons and other artists at the time that it wasn't exhibited again until 1916, when all over again it caused scandal and outrage. It was deemed immoral. And that wasn't so much because of the five nudes who were gazing directly back at the spectator, or the fact that they were prostitutes. It was the way he painted it. Picasso broke every rule in the book. The perspective was flat. The bodies were fragmented, angular panes of colour, and the faces, those grotesque faces. The painting was altogether a brutal attack on everything that the art world had held sacred since the Renaissance. One collector, Shukin, actually broke down in tears when he saw it and said, what a loss for French art. So let's take it back and find out how Picasso actually got to the point of creating this work. In 1906, he was working and living in Paris, and he was pretty successful. He'd been through his blue and his rose periods. He was enjoying the patronage and frequenting the salon in Vincent ou Fleurus of the great American collectors Leo and Gertrude Stein. He was also caught up in a friendly duel, if you like, with his contemporary Henri Matisse. Matisse, who'd led the Fauvist movement, one of the transitional step phases, out of post-impressionism. But Picasso was looking to do something a little bit special. He really wanted to come up with something that was going to shake up the notions of what Western art was all about. He wanted to rebel, cause a revolution, if you like. So where did he go to find the inspiration for this? Well, of course, he dove first and foremost into his own soul, into his own mind. And he looked at other painters and artifacts which had registered in his imagination. As a young man, he'd always been drawn to the work of El Greco, another Spanish painter, characterised by his own anti-conformist use of colour and settings. But also in Paris have been recent, very important posthumous retrospectives at the Salon d'Autun for Paul Gauguin and for Paul Cézanne, both of whom Picasso respected enormously. And then there was the primitive art at the Musée d'Ethnographie in Paris, which was a staple for culture-hungry Parisians. And there were examples not only of classical Iberian art, but also tribal African art, and in particular, masks. Now, Picasso began to make sketches in preparation for his new work, dozens of sketches. He reimagined the works that he adored so much, such as The Bathers by Cézanne, manipulating them into his own style. And this was a habit that he repeated almost, almost obsessively, actually, through most of his career. Slowly, this potpourri of fragments, borrowed and recycled, began to take shape as Les Demoiselles d'Avignon. At first, Picasso intended the work to be a narrative painting. And in fact, the final sketches he made shows a sailor in the scene coming to visit the ladies. But then he abandoned that idea and ran with gut instinct, allowing the true style of the painting to provide the impact. And boy, oh boy, did it do that. Arrayed like monumental statues on a shallow curtain stage, Les Demoiselles stare brazenly out at the canvas with masked faces. The women show us their body, but also their contempt, because we are the viewer, but we're also the consumer. The art and soul of this painting reveal an aspect which is fundamental to the concept of retromodernism. What we see on the canvas, or in sculpture, design, photographs, or whatever, is an artist working as a kaleidoscope, bringing together elements of art, anthropology, sociology, in one totally unique, personal form of expression. That is the essence of retromodernism. So thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Do please click down here somewhere below. Uh, check out our content on the website. There's an Instagram page, a Facebook page. Just keep up with us really and keep an eye out uh, on the channel because obviously there are other works in the pipeline and we will be exploring not only contemporary art but also art of the past and trying to put together a better picture of what retromodernism is all about.
Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again.